Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm John Peters and in this video I am going to talk about the understanding of how meditation helps to lower anxiety and improve our stress reaction. And to do that I'm going to talk about this how the stress reaction happens in our brain and our body and then how meditation both provides some direct soothing of that response, but also rewires our response so that even when we're not practicing, we get like a brain fitness effect and we perform a lot better. Okay, so I'm gonna begin by talking about a basic understanding of how the stress reaction works. And then I'm going to talk about how mindful breathing actually helps us have less stress and in a direct sense helps us calm down and also conditions our system so that we handle stress better. And by the way, I'm not going to do a comprehensive discussion of all the ways that science and research has uh, discovered that meditation affects the brain and our functioning. I might do that in a later video, but I'm gonna talk about some central parts of the fight, flight, freeze, fawn response and how mindful meditation is actually very helpful for that. And the basis of the reason that I practice it myself, I recommend it for people that I've shared it with thousands of people over my career, and that I think it's likely that it could be something that you could consider experimenting with to see if it would be helpful for you. And by the way, um, I will say that a resource that's really very, very helpful to check out that gives a wonderful explanation that goes into greater detail about the, the human stress system is the book Hardwiring Happiness by Rick Hansen. And I'm going to do a book review of that in the near future. So you can look for that on this channel. But um, if you look below in the description of this video, you will see a link to that book. And the first part of that book, although the, the second part of the book does a different thing and it's a really wonderful read, but the first part of that book has a really, really good description of how stress, the stress system works in the human brain. <clears throat> so check that out. Uh, and by the way, when I put links in my descriptions, here, uh, they are mostly affiliate links. Um, they don't cost you any more if you follow them and end up purchasing something, but the purchases do end up helping the channel. So just be aware of that. So here's something to know about how the stress system works as it pertains to why I think mindful breathing is a very good thing for us. Um, number one, when we get triggered by something, we start off at what we call our baseline. So wherever we are before we get triggered, we spike up and we peak at some point and then we resolve back down toward our baseline over X amount of time, okay? So we could call that the stress curve, right? And the first point of the trigger is usually a quick ramping up to a stress activation, the fight, flight, freeze, fawn response. And then how long we stay up at the high end of the curve is dependent to some degree on the mental glue that glues us into that stress target. And I talked in another video, if you watch the videos on the concrete thinking on this channel, and I talked about the situation of having a friend going through a breakup and then you notice that they won't shut up talking about the breakup for weeks or months even. And that's because their brain has glued them into that stress target, not because it's a good idea to focus on a breakup as much as people often do, right? But um, so there's the, the, the spike and how long we stay up at the higher end has to do with the glue, the mental glue, right? And then we resolve back toward baseline. Okay, that's one way to understand the stress response. Another way to understand it is how the physical mechanism mediates the actual response. So we have our big brain, the gray squiggly part, the neocortex. We have perception of stress or maybe even just an inner thought of stress. And that perception leads to firing off a cascade, a sequence of events that happen in our body. The first part of which is often called the gatekeeper of the stress response, which is the amygdala gland. 
So up underneath our brain, if you turn the human brain upside down, the endocrine system is mostly situated up under the brain. And the amygdala is the first gland that starts activating when the stress response kicks off. Okay. Now, the amygdala is directly wired into some parts of the neocortex that causes some brain changes to happen directly. But the amygdala also communicates to other glands like the pituitary and thalamus and hypothalamus and the adrenal glands that sit down on top of our kidneys. And all those glands then communicate with hormones and pump the stress hormones out into our bloodstream. And those affect each other and also our target organs. Okay, so that's kind of a a snapshot of the system that is our, what's called the sympathetic uh, nervous system that is the fight, flight, freeze, fawn response, right? The stress response. Um, so, so I mention all of that because when we do something like mindful breathing, then what we do is we activate what's called the parasympathetic side of the nervous system. And the sympathetic is the ramping up of the stress response, but the parasympathetic is the bringing back down. And it's not just a, a passive coming back down. It's actually a reversal of the stress response, right? And so uh, when we do relaxed breathing or we do deep breathing or we do breathing where the exhale is longer than the inhale, things like that, it will cause the soothing aspect of the stress response. And this is why things like mindful breathing and a lot of other stress management techniques have beneficial direct effects, right? And today in this video, I'm talking about direct effects and indirect effects. So a direct effect is analogous to taking a Tylenol if you have a headache. You want the direct effect with the Tylenol while it's on board, you get pain control, then it wears off and you don't get any effect from the Tylenol. But stress management techniques often will have a direct effect so that while you're practicing them, you will actually feel the effects right then and there in real time. An example of this is when we sigh. So I invite you to sigh with me right now. So I'm going to sigh. We'll sigh together. One, two, three. <sighs> Some of you out there may not have done that with me. So I invite you, if you're willing, do it with me when I do it a second time. Here we go. One, two, three. <sighs> especially during the exhale part of the sigh. You can feel that relaxation happening in the body. And when that, that slower, longer out breath is happening, it's actually activating the opposite of the stress response, which we can sometimes subjectively feel. And so that's a direct effect. So if you do mindful breathing, and by the way, the video that follows this one that I'm going to link after this is going to be a concise video that is mostly focused on just the nitty-gritty nuts and bolts of how to practice mindful breathing. In this video, I'm mainly focused on how it works, which is the part of the why you should practice, right? Um, and so, so it is fine to use mindful breathing and other similar techniques for the direct effect. But I will tell you, that is not why I tend to recommend it. I tend to recommend it for its indirect effects because to me even though the direct effects are valuable the indirect effects are different and very valuable in and of themselves too so an example of an indirect effect is going to the gym and exercising so that you get fitness the fitness effect because if you get more fit then you are going to be more fit even while you're not working out right so if i go do curls with the appropriate amount of weight for the appropriate challenge for my, my bicep, then my bicep will respond by getting fitter, right? So eventually I can curl a greater amount of weight. Similar to cardiovascular exercise, if I run on the treadmill, my cardiovascular system will respond by getting more fit, and then I can run further, right, longer. And so, so the brain actually has plasticity such that when we do certain things, it will change, and then we retain those changes, right? Learning is an example of that. Like, like once you learn to ride a bike, you retain that. You don't forget it. You just know how to ride a bike for the rest of your life. So, so some changes are very durable, and some changes, like uh, the types that happen with mindful breathing, 
change the way that our stress system works in good ways. And, and by good ways, let me say specifically, because of the things I described earlier, what happens with mindful breathing is when we do it enough, and I'll talk later about what enough is, but if we do an appropriate type of practice and we do enough of it, then when we uh, start off, even before we have the stress trigger, our baseline stress score is actually going to be lower. So where you start matters. None of us start at zero. So we're all flying along at one, two, or three a lot of the time, uh, even if we're relatively calm. But when you regularly practice mindful breathing, your baseline will actually be lower. So any sort of spike starts from a lower position so it doesn't go as high, which is good for us. Number two, when you spike up, you won't spike as high from whatever your starting position is. Number three, you won't get as glued in, right? Now, it doesn't take away the ability to focus. In fact, some uh, research has shown that mindful breathing is actually very good for the quality of attention and the ability to focus. And they've done some studies with people with the diagnosis of ADHD uh, where mindful breathing actually improved their academic performance. And I'm going to talk about that in another video soon, too. But that, so it doesn't remove our ability to focus, but it does weaken the strength of that glue. So that glue that, that glues us into the stress target, that's not going to be as strong. It's going to be easier for that glue to, to unhook and for us to come back down on the stress curve toward our baseline after the trigger, right? So lower baseline to begin with, spike not as big of a spike, glue not as strong so we can resolve back down to our baseline more readily, right? Now, people also tend to report that in general their mood is more positive, and people also commonly report that if they're regularly practicing mindful breathing that their sleep quality gets better, which I think are, is related to all the, the earlier things that I mentioned. So in any case, when people do an appropriate amount and appropriate type of breathing meditation, it conditions the brain so that you're rewiring certain neural pathways in the brain that are involved with the stress response so that when the trigger happens and that inner cascade goes on that I described earlier, that that's actually not going to happen in as miserable a way in terms of our subjective experience. But functionally, as I said, you're not going to spike up as high and you're going to resolve back toward your baseline more readily. Right, very valuable. And so, so here's the secret, though, I want to share with you. And, and if you watch my video uh, that I posted earlier about like my backstory and how I got into practicing things like this and why I decided to incorporate it in my practice and the types of things that I've learned over my 25 years in my career, um, what I think the secret is uh, that is the core reason that you get those benefits. And again, lots of other reasons you get benefits, and I might make a video where I talk about what all the research says about all the different theories about why meditation is good, but my main takeaway of what I have come to understand about meditation is that it gives you the indirect benefits because paradoxically, while it is directly soothing a lot of the time, not all the time and in the same ways, but a lot of the time if you practice a little bit, you'll feel somewhat more calm in the moment, but it is also challenging. So that's kind of paradoxical, soothing but challenging at the same time. And that's because if you practice, you will quickly notice from the very first time you practice that while it is simple and while it in, in one way will calm you down, that our brain actually gets activated. And if you go read the book that I suggested, and follow the link below to take a look at Hardwiring Happiness by Rick Hansen, Hansen does a great job of explaining that our brains are sensation-seeking organs. The, our brain is constantly scanning for danger, basically. And so even when we're doing something as simple as just relaxing, breathing, watching the breath, letting the breath be natural, our brain is going to fire off the danger signal because it's weird and unusual, and our brain wants to create more sensation too. But we're not in danger and so what you do in terms of the practice is as what I call awkwardness or impatience arises in the middle of the practice session, you just notice that, you don't bite, you don't get hooked, you don't take the ball and run with it, you just let that go and you relax again, right? And 
every time you do that, that's rewiring the neural pathways associated with your stress response, and it's particularly rewiring it so that your brain is not as apt to make what we call a false positive hit on danger, right? So like if I'm sitting here, I'm in my room, I'm safe, nothing dangerous is happening. I'm going to do some relaxed breathing, but that inner awkwardness arises. That's the stress system going ahead and saying, wait, something might be wrong here, which is a version of, I think I might be in danger, right? But that's a false hit on danger because it's false. I'm not truly in danger. And what I need for my system to do is become progressively more attuned so that when I'm not truly in danger, I'm not getting the hit on the danger signal and the stress response, right? I want the stress response to work if it needs to, although honestly, it was designed for physical threats and not most of the types of threats that you and I tend to encounter in our lives. So few of us are being chased by giant bears and saber-toothed tigers these days. Therefore, the physical changes that come along with the stress response don't really help us too much, but we'll talk about that in another video too. However, um, what we want to do is we want to do meditation partly to expose us to an appropriate challenge, just like an appropriate challenge with an appropriate amount of weight on my bicep makes me able to eventually get more fit and curl more weight. An appropriate exposure to the challenge of being still and calm, even though the false hits on positive are going to arise during the sessions, that rewires the brain and gives me the brain fitness effect. And it will for you too. It works that way. That's what the exercise of meditation is. And I think this is an important point to understand too, because many times when I talk to people who say, yeah, I tried meditation, it didn't work. What they often mean when I ask them to explain what happened is, oh yeah, I tried to sit and be calm, but then actually felt tension arising. So I was failing at it. Well, that's exactly what's going to happen. And that's not failure. And if none of that happened, it would be like me going to the gym to work out and all the weights are one pound weights. If there's no challenge, how do I get the fitness effect, right? I have to have an appropriate amount of challenge to get the fitness effect. And if I sat down to meditate, and I was filled with waves of cosmic bliss and supremely calm and clear-minded the whole time, I wouldn't get any better at handling stress. I wouldn't because a need for that false positive to come up, which it will, guaranteed, there's a 100% chance of that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in the habit of not biting, not getting hooked. I'm going to let go of it and let it go away, right? So try this with me right now, okay? What I want you to do is just relax whatever position you're in, standing, sitting, lying down, doesn't matter. Just you're, you're relatively comfortable, hopefully. You're going to relax your body one notch. You don't have to be a floppy noodle. Just relax. Notice your breath. Your belly is going in and out when you breathe. Just look at it. Watch the breath go in and out. And then your chest is moving too. And so... You're going to stay with the mindfulness of the breath. We're in real time. We're present-centered, staying with the mindfulness. And what I want you to do is just add one more thing. Every time you breathe in, I want you to say in, in your head, not out loud, and silently to yourself in your head. Every time you breathe out, you're just going to go out. So This is the whole practice. Relax position, relaxation that you're allowing to happen inside, mindfulness of the breath, saying in, and out when you breathe in and you breathe out, okay? So in, out, in, out. Stay with it because you may notice some calming. You may notice that you're getting a little more calm than you were, but you're gonna feel some inner tension somewhere, guaranteed going to feel like I, what I call awkwardness. It's a feeling I get when I say I'm impatient. And when you notice it, you just let it go. Go back with in with the next in-breath. So that's what I'm talking about. Meditation has the direct effect of, yes, soothing you a bit and calming you down. It's fine to use it that way. 
But to me, the real value are those brain fitness benefits that you get because of how your brain rewires itself when it's faced with an appropriate amount of challenge. And let me tell you what the appropriate amount is in my mind, right? There are different ideas about this. I am not the perfect end-all expert who knows everything. People can debate this. But based on 25 years of sharing this with thousands of people and over 35 years of personally practicing with it, I will tell you that if you do 30 seconds to one minute at a time and you do a total of four to five minutes per day, within one week to 10 days, you will start to get enough of the indirect brain fitness changes that you will unambiguously start to notice that you are not spiking up as high when you get triggered by something some of the time. You're resolving more quickly than you typically will with particular triggers. Your baseline is creeping down and you may notice some of those other beneficial indirect effects like you're sleeping better and your mood's a little better. But but you're going to unambiguously start to notice those effects about a week to 10 days as long as you're doing four to five total minutes of that. So in the next video, I'm going to talk a little more, just give a concise introduction to how to practice and answer some common questions that people have about how to practice. But I wanted in this video to talk about the why. Why do I choose the particular method that I tend to recommend 99% of the time? And it's because I want people to have those benefits. I want those benefits for myself. And having personally practiced a wide variety of meditation techniques and quite a lot over the years, and as I said, having shared it with thousands of people, you know, thousands of my patients and about 4,000 students at uh, the local university where I, I taught, um, I have found that you'd really, you don't have to wait years to get the benefits. You don't have to wait weeks. And you don't have to do 40 minutes to an hour a day, honestly. Um, if you can do more, you know, it's somewhat dose related and a little more will do better, but we'll talk about that later in the next video. But, but the thing is, 30 seconds to a minute, four to five minutes a day is going to be enough for you to notice those indirect effects. And one benefit of that, too, is that once you actually start getting some real effects, you're not going on faith. You're not doing it because I sound convincing when I talk about it. At that point, you're doing it because, oh, yeah, I am discovering what I get when I do that. Just like if I go to the gym, I'm going to start working out just out of the hope that I'm going to get more fit. But as I start to get more fit, that increased good feeling about my fitness becomes a motivator to help me commit to following through with an appropriate level of exercise so that I stay fit and I enjoy fitness after that. So if you practice some, you know, you'll get some of enough of that uh, so that it becomes its own motivator. At this point, if you haven't been doing some experimentation with it, you're on the front end of it, that's fine. But I would say commit to doing two to three weeks of experimenting with it, and then you'll find out if it's working well for you. So in the next video, I'm going to make a concise here's how to practice video. It's one that people can easily watch uh, again without having to uh, go through all of this explanation that I've given in this video. Uh, and it's also the type of video that you could share with someone if you have a family member or or someone you care about, and you say, hey, look, here's an here's a easy technique. Because here's the thing. If you know how to do it, which is what I'm going to talk about in the next video, it actually doesn't matter what you think about it, right? Just like going to the gym. I could go to the gym and work out, or I could go to the gym and work out after having read, like, 20 books about working out. And as long as I work out in the proper way, I'm going to get more fit. So with mindful breathing... You don't get those benefits that I talked about because of what you think about it. It actually doesn't matter what you think about it. It doesn't even matter if you like it. What matters is that you do it and you do it correctly. And to me, correctly is based on the things that I shared in this video, which is why the stress response happens the way it does and why mindful breathing affects how the stress response happens. Okay, that's the intellectual basis of just why to practice. But as long as you practice, you will get the benefits. It works that way. It doesn't matter exactly what idea you have about it. All right, so thanks for watching. And if you like this video and this type of content, hit the like button down below, please. And feel free to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this type of content and want this handy over there on the side of your screen so you can pull up my channel easily. But thanks for watching. And I'll put a card at the end of this video 
for the next one, which will be the, uh, the how-to guide.